welcome to worship here on this third midweek service. Thank you to those who provided soup and bread for us tonight, and we hope that everyone who um, took part in that meal enjoyed it and that it brought some comfort and um, a nice dinner to you. In the words of St. Peter, it is good for us to be here tonight. We are thankful for this time to be able to worship and prepare as we continue our journey through this season of Lent. We begin in the name of the triune God, in whose presence we wait. The God who created all, the God who bore the cross, the God who dwells in us, we come to worship tonight. Amen. Come to the Lord with openness. Seeking God's presence. Bring your doubts, bring your faith. For this is the journey. We come to worship aware of our frailty and our failings. We come seeking God's mercy. We listen for the call of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus 
was a master storyteller. He was a persuasive speaker and a charismatic preacher. Jesus brought all these elements together in his amazing use of parables as teaching tools. The parables permeate the entirety of Jesus's ministry as our Gospels have recorded for us. He did not invent the use of these storytelling techniques, but he most certainly made this style of writing famous. Because of Jesus, we have the parables of the prodigal son, the good Samaritan, the parable of the lost sheep, as well as some of the lesser known teachings, such as the parable of the sower and the parable of the mustard seed, among many, many others. Some of these parables are so well known that they are even known out into our popular culture today with a television show that came out in 2019 called The Prodigal Son and laws that have been codified in our legal system called Good Samaritan Laws. Many of these parables that are so well known are beloved by many. And this may be because we can actually understand these stories. Some of these most famous, the prodigal son, the good Samaritan, we can grasp the lessons that they teach. The messages are relatively straightforward. But unfortunately, that isn't the case with all of them. There are some parables that we have heard in church for our entire lives, and we still don't quite get it. Or at least we're not really sure if we get it. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Some of the, the parables are much more mysterious, leaving us scratching our heads, wondering what Jesus was trying to teach us, leaving us wondering, why do these stories have to be so confusing? Well, it seems if we were to ask that question of Jesus, he would say, because I intended for them to be that way. From our reading tonight, Jesus does seem to indicate that there is a plan in place where the disciples are given a much deeper scope and understanding of the teachings that Jesus gives to the crowds and to us who follow after him. Today, our faith affirms the priesthood of all believers, a phrase coined by Martin Luther during the Reformation to ensure that it was clear to everyone that we all have a role to play in the spread of the gospel. We believe in a whole that it is not the pastor or the bishop or any other church leader who possesses the sole ability to study the scriptures and speak out about the gospel. A task that large needs us all. But here, during Jesus' earthly ministry, there is a need for these first apostles to gain a deeper knowledge that will prepare them to be the first to follow in Jesus' footsteps after his ascension. Even if the disciples themselves don't yet quite understand that at this stage, with our 21st century mindset, with information that is available to us in an instant, only a Google search away, any questions asked and answered in mere seconds, we see that Jesus was not preaching and teaching at the speed of the internet. We may be a people who expect quick and straightforward answers. We may think that we deserve simple solutions to complex problems, but Jesus has a different plan in mind. The ways of God are, in fact, 
not always as simple or straightforward. Jesus expects us to slow down, to think, to ponder, to question, to seek. Jesus is offering us divine teaching. And divine teaching does not come easily or simply. Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah, words spoken by God at a time of intense crisis for the people of Israel all the way back in the 700s BCE. After Isaiah's repeated urgent calls to the people for repentance and return to God, God finally acknowledges that no matter what Isaiah says, it's not going to matter. The people hear Isaiah speak, but they do not listen. They listen to his words, but fail to understand their meaning or grasp their importance. Israel sees the things going on around them, but refuses to acknowledge the criticality or perceive the reality that is revealed by Isaiah's words. While the people continue to worship and sacrifice and give offerings, they are simply going through the motions. They have shut their hearts and minds to the living word of God. God accuses them with the painful words, this people's heart has grown dull. God receives what the people refuse to acknowledge, their own lives their own concerns, their own interests have taken precedence over what God calls them to. God's calls have gone unheeded. God's warnings to the people that they are failing to live in obedience to God's commands have been overlooked and brushed aside. Here, at this halfway point of our Lenten journey, we are deep into the wilderness. We have come to this place looking to find ourselves, hoping to glean some answers to issues and concerns and worries and doubts that plague us. We come in prayer with hope that we might strengthen our faith for the remainder of this journey, which leads to such a perilous place. We stand in the middle of the wilderness with our faces turned toward Jerusalem. And we pray, we pray that there will be light and victory there. But a shadow looms before us in the shape of a cross. In this place and in our lives, we struggle to make sense of what this shadow means. How is it that we can find hope in such a dangerous and deadly place? It makes no sense to us how the cross must play a role in this final teaching. The greatest parable of all, not told by Jesus in a story, but lived out through his own life. The greatest paradox of all exists when we come to understand that our life is found where Jesus' life gave way. When we so desperately want to look away from the brutality of the cross, when we so desperately want to look away from the brutality of this world and the devastating losses that occur there. Jesus called to us, don't look away, open your eyes, listen with your ears, understand with your heart, turn and be healed. In his sacrifice, Jesus offers himself for our sake, indeed for the sake of the whole world. In this sacrifice, Jesus teaches us the depths of love that Jesus has for all God's creation, for all of God's people. From the cross, Jesus both sacrifices and commands. If we have the courage 
language to listen. Here at the cross, Jesus gives us a final lesson. Jesus shows us what a sacrificial life is meant to be. A life lived for the sake of others. A life lived in obedience to whom God calls us to be. The cross is real. And it is brutal. And it cannot be ignored. We cannot pay simple platitudes to the enormity of what transpired on that terrible Friday afternoon outside the walls of Jerusalem. As disciples, we follow in Jesus' footsteps, as scary and as uncertain as they may be. As Christians, we are called to a life of servanthood. As God's beloved and holy people, we are called to live as a people who reflect Christ's own love of neighbor. Thanks be to God, it is almost certain that none of us will be called to sacrifice our very lives the way that Jesus did and most of his first apostles did. But it is most certainly true that we are called to a life of sacrifice for the sake of our neighbors, to live for the sake of the world whom Jesus came to save, to use our gifts and abilities for the sake of the world that God created and called good. We are to hear the call of the Holy Spirit and follow wherever she may lead, for that is where God needs us to be. Amen. Together we will sing our hymn of the day, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 611.
always. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, and draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Lord of all light, when we cannot see the beauty of your creation, open our eyes that all living things may thrive and grow. When we neglect the poor, the lost, the sick, and the grieving, open our hands to do your work in the world. When we ignore the cries of injustice in our midst, open our ears so that all will know your love. When we are hardened against our neighbor, and ignore the stranger among us. Open our hearts and heal our resentment and sinfulness. When we are close to the grace you long to give us. Open our lives and turn us to follow in the way of the cross. Almighty God, fill us with courage and call us to walk in your ways for the sake of all the world. Into your hands, gracious God and Holy Spirit of might, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, go out into the world with eyes open to the transforming light of Christ. Hands open to serve those you meet. Ears open to hear the call of the Holy Spirit. Hearts open to the bountiful love of God. And with lives open to follow the way of the cross. May God, who opened for us the way of everlasting life, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will sing our sending hymn number 608.
Go in peace, filled with God's calling. Go in love, filled with Christ's compassion. Go in hope, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit.